uh, really make three points and and the reason to do this is as you probably know uh, we have scheduled for tomorrow a Senate Rules Committee hearing uh, the main business of which is to adopt the plan for the new Senate, uh, state office building Senate office building as required by the uh, legislation that was passed last year that the project has to have an approval by the rules committees in the house and the senate and we have a scheduled uh, hearing for tomorrow so we really are here to make three points and the first one is that uh, we don't believe republicans our caucus does not believe that we ought to rush into a rules committee hearing tomorrow uh, and vote on this project uh, and and one reason for that is that there is a hearing scheduled next week in the court over the lawsuit that was filed by former Representative Jim Nabla questioning the constitutionality of the process by which this project was enacted. And we think it is prudent to allow the court to at least have the opportunity to weigh in on this before we act. I think it would be irresponsible for us to, to get a project going that may be in jeopardy. And if that were to happen, if the court were to say uh, that uh, we, we don't uh, think this is appropriate and we've already initiated it, that could present some difficulties. Secondly. Uh, we also want to make the point that there will be no Republicans who will vote for this project in the Rules Committee. Uh, we, uh, uh, last year, as this was being enacted, it came up as an amendment in the Tax Committee. I believe it was Senator Ortman at that time who made a motion to take it out, uh, failed, came to the floor as part of the tax bill. We, of course, did not support the tax bill, and there was also an amendment that was offered by Republicans to take this project out of the tax bill. And the argument, of course, is that set aside the merits of the building, whether we should have it or not, the process by which this is done should not be in a tax bill. And that's really the question that Representative Knobloch is raising in his lawsuit. Uh, so uh, that, that uh, uh, amendment to take it out of the tax bill last year was uh, supported 100 percent by members of our caucus and supported 100 percent by the members of the DFL. Um, so what we're really doing, and the argument has been that we need to do this to sort of keep this uh, capital restoration project going and to allow for there to be space for uh, senators to have offices in the course of this, but what, what it seems to me is that we're making a hundred-year decision to solve a two-year problem, and that does, to me and to us doesn't seem to be responsible. So third, let me just again uh, reiterate the concerns that we have. This is an unnecessary project. Uh, we believe that the Capitol has been the uh, offices for at least the majority, and before that, all of the Senate, for ever since the beginning of uh, the, the building's uh, uh, purpose. And, and there's no need to, to, to set that aside and say, let's build this $90 million, uh, some would call it ostentatious, uh, building across the street. Secondly, this was done without any public input. The process is flawed. There was no hearing. There was no bill. There was no opportunity for the public to come and weigh in and talk about the merits of this building or whether in terms of the other priorities that we face, this should be a priority. So this did not go through the normally expected process. Uh, we also think, as I said, that we should wait for this lawsuit to see if there is any merit to what is being brought. Uh, I think uh, another point that needs to be talked about is that there is no clear understanding of what the financing is. There's no long-term commitment. There's no bonding. Typically, when you build a building and you pass the bonds, you have an assured stream of revenue that will, that will pay for this. It is not clear to us, and we have asked the questions, how is this building going to get paid? And it seems to me what, what it sounds like, and I don't know, but it sounds like what we're saying is that we're going to rely on future legislatures to appropriate the funds necessary on a sort of pay-as-you-go process. Well, we all know you cannot bind a future legislature to, to do anything, and it seems to me this is a very highly speculative and risky form of financing a significant capital project. Um, I think, again, in our opinion, this whole thing could be characterized fairly as a boondoggle. Uh, you look at the, the project, you look at how it's designed, you look at the manner in which it's being designed, you look at the purpose for which the, it's as hard to escape that this is being done uh, not without public input uh, to satisfy the interests of the members of the legislature. And that's just really not what we should do. So our view is this re reflects some of the misplaced priorities that the governor and the DFL majorities have. The project cost $90 million. There's been an effort uh, recently in the last several months since the end of last session to look at financing some uh, uh, pay uh, increase, a much needed pay increase for long-term care workers, 5%. That's about $87 million. It seems to us, and I think to mem members of the public would agree, that that would be a far better use of public resources than building this palatial uh, crystal palace across the street. So with that, uh, I don't know if uh, Senators uh, Ingebert, Senator Newman want to make any comments, but uh, you have anything to I'll just make one, one quick comment. And, and my biggest uh, criticism uh, 
of this is the process or the lack of the process. I sit on the bonding committee, I sit on the finance committee, and I will tell you that uh, neither committee heard this, uh, this matter. It, there isn't a standalone bill on it. This literally came out of, uh, out of nowhere. And I think that uh, uh, we as legislators and the media and the public, we have a right to know what's going on. And the process that was involved in this, in this parking ramp in this legislative building literally stinks. It came out of, the, out of like a, a smoke-filled backroom deal. And I could not be more critical of those who have brought this forward in the manner that they did. This should have been open, uh, an open and public process where we had a right to ask questions. Yeah, thank you. I too uh, would, would feel the same as uh, Senator Newman sitting on the uh, bonding committee and finance committee with him. Uh, and also doing traveling uh, with uh, Senator Stump over the last two and a half months of looking at projects that, that were way, way less, way, way less expenditures than, than this uh, very, very large expenditure uh, going on here and not one hearing, not one hearing in the bonding committee, not one hearing in the finance committee. You know, the, the, the public out there thinks that, uh, that, that bills come forward that we don't read before we vote on. Well, quite frankly, there was nothing here. There was nothing here until the last minute to vote on. So when they, when they leave with that kind of a perception of what goes on down here in St. Paul in Washington, D.C., there's a reason why. And the big question has to be asked of the DFL why they decided to do this in the last waning hours without any public input. I think it was shameful. Any questions that we can respond to? Building planners say this is necessary because of the renovations and the space concerns. Do you disagree with the yes. nonpartisan planners? Well, I disagree with the presumption that, that uh, we cannot continue to, to house the Senate in this building. Uh, we have done that historically for you know, 100 years. Senate's not housed here. Is it fun to be well, over in the state office building well, and the minority I, to have to move? Well, and, and, you know, and the flip-flop, is that scheme smart for the Senate? I, I'm not going to say it's necessarily smart. It, it is what it is. But the point is, do you need to spend $90 million of public money to build a building that still won't house all the members of the Senate? It's only going to have 44 offices over there for Senate members. So it still will not solve that problem if that is the problem of trying to get everybody in one building. It doesn't do that. Uh, so I think, I think the, the use of the Capitol building itself, and there has been some debate about that, and maybe that should be something that should be questioned, but, but my understanding is in the course of this process, some of the space that had been traditionally reserved for the Senate is being uh, traded off to the House or to the Governor's office or the Attorney General and, uh, I don't know, other places as well. Is that really the appropriate thing? If this is an office building primarily for the use of the Senate, uh, which I believe uh, there's an argument that you could make for that, then there's space and there's a way to do it, make it work. And we ought to do that rather than spend the money, and particularly in the way that has been described by my colleagues is how this is done. If this is really an important project, put it in the bonding bill. Let it go through the hearings. Have people come and give testimony. Have it get that two-thirds majority that would require support from both caucuses to get it done. Uh, I think uh, we've seen the recent effects of having one party rule, things get passed with a partisan vote, the uh, Minsure, the exchange, uh, Obamacare, those things don't work out very well. When you talk about major projects that are being done on a partisan basis, I think this qualifies as one of those things that could be a mistake since you do not have and did not have any uh, input besides, uh, I guess, the DFL caucus. Is it still ostentatious? There's no more reflecting pool, no more <laughs> workout room. Were those well, I, positive you've developments? Got the, uh, you've got the building. Uh, I, I guess uh, how you the adjective you used to describe it. Uh, I know we had to get a special uh, dispensation to allow the building to be higher than the Capitol. Apparently that's a, a rule that we've had for a long time, that no buildings on the campus area of the Capitol will be higher than the state Capitol. This one will be. Um, so uh, I, I guess I would call it ostentatious and unnecessary. You're not encouraged that it's been scaled back a little bit. I'm told seven million was trimmed out those features. I don't think that the uh, the budget has been affected by whatever changes in the plan. And, and I think that uh, my answer to your question would be uh, that the answer lies in the full committee hearing process. And if we had, uh, if committee hearings, public hearings had been held, you would know the answer to your question. Anything else? Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. We appreciate your being here today, and we'll look forward to the uh, committee hearing tomorrow, and we'll see what happens.